good evening i hope we are live just waiting for the confirmation i guess we are okay uh, if at all uh, there is an issue with respect to audio or video please do let me know in the chat otherwise i'm assuming it is fine welcome to excel academy today we'll be looking at uh, ceet's uh, current affairs section uh, obviously one of the most important sections there now uh, with respect to excel academy we have been conducting classes for uh, company secretary course since uh, more than 10 years now and also uh, we have our website uh, as you can see uh, on the screen you can go there uh, www.excelacademy.com e k c e l the links of which are already also there in the description uh, if at all you have any queries with respect to cs course you can always uh, get in touch with us the numbers are also there in the description please do please do register on the website as well uh, there are um, enough number of free courses uh, available on the website which is not put up on youtube so yeah that's it so let us straight away get into the topic which is uh, the current affairs now let's start with uh, the questions which state has received the first prize for the best adventure to tourism and all round as well so all round tourism as well as for the adventure tourism which state has got the prize recently uh, the choices here are kerala telangana assam and uttarakhand of course some of the questions here will not have choices just because i thought some choices does not make any sense so therefore in some uh, cases i have just removed the choices completely so given the choices uh, the most plausible option seems to be either uh, kerala or uttarakhand because um, obviously rest of the states that is assam can still be considered at least but telangana at least is not known for its tourism as such especially not adventure tourism so we can eliminate those two so now let us look at the answer so if you see here it's a news item basically it says uttarakhand has been adjudged the best state for tourism development okay so this is reported on uh, deccan herald it was on 27th uh, september what does it say uttarakhand has been named the best state for comprehensive development of tourism at the national tourism awards conferred by the tourism ministry that's uh, by the union government so they have awarded uttarakhand's uh, i mean the state uttarakhand for its tourism so that is the thing okay uh, darshiga i hope i am pronouncing your name says current affairs was little bit tough in mock test okay uh, again current affairs is always tough i would say because the subject itself the current affairs anything can be current so the the scope of the subject is vast there is no limitation here as such whereas if you look at logical reasoning or legal aptitude or even the communication aspect there is a set syllabus for that and they have to ask the questions within that framework whereas in case of um, current affairs there is no such set syllabus they can ask the question from anywhere as such so it will always be tough so i would suggest please um, attend as many mock tests as possible when it comes to current affairs otherwise it will probably be tough to some extent at least it's all subjective by the way if by chance you get such questions which you have already read or studied then it will be easy so to increase the probability of that you will have to cover more and more topics that's the only way at least according to me okay so that's about the tourism thing uh, remember it's uttarakhand which was adjudged adjudged as the best state for tourism development by whom by the national tourism i mean by the union uh, tourism ministry and uh, it was conferred under this category national tourism awards category okay okay uh, darshika says they have also asked 2020 year question that is a bit unfair um, i know uh, sometimes it happens institute can be cruel when it comes to things like this uh, like for instance they do not allow calculator for legal aptitude or oh, sorry logical um, reasoning uh, which uh, according to me is stupidity anyway moving on FIFA has released a three episode series on the life and career of which Indian football player FIFA the federation of football federation um, just like we have ICC for cricket uh, for uh, football we have FIFA they have released some three episode series on life on on life and career of an Indian player that too 
which is surprising. The options here are Manjit Kataria, uh, Bajrang Punia, definitely not Bajrang Punia, Sunil Chetri and Neha Singh. So this one is actually quite easy. Uh, Sunil Chetri is in fact the right answer. Let us look at the explanation here. FIFA honors Sunil Chetri for his achievements, uh, releases three episode series on his life and career. Okay, uh, that is the thing. Um, this is uh, from Times of India. It was published on 29th of September. Now, World Football Governing Body FIFA has released a three-episode series on the life and career of talismanic Indian football team captain Sunil Chetri in recognition of his achievements and goal-scoring exploits, they say. FIFA announced that three episodes are available on FIFA Plus, its streaming flat platform. Even FIFA has got a streaming platform. So, you know all about Ronaldo and Messi. Now, get the definitive story of the third highest scoring active men's international Sunil Chetri. Anyway, uh, this is what uh, FIFA tweeted uh, with respect to Sunil Chetri's uh, series. Most likely FIFA has done this uh, with the upcoming Football World Cup. Uh, they want um, maximum viewership so they cannot uh, ignore a country like India for sure. And also you might have heard of uh, a recent uh, thing which happened in Kerala with respect to football. If you haven't, just look it up. It's not Definitely related to general knowledge, but still look it up. It's an interesting thing. So they put up posters of Messi, Neymar and the other one who I forgot. So, so it happened in one of the districts in Kerala. Anyway, moving on. Oh, by the way, uh, Bajrang Punya is also uh, some, someone whom you should be aware of. Let's see who is Bajrang Punya. Bajrang Punya is an Indian freestyle wrestler hailing from Haryana. Okay, He is currently ranked number two. 2 in the 65 kg weight category. So there are different weight categories when it comes to wrestling. And this man, Bajrang Punya, is ranked number 2. He is the only Indian wrestler to have won 3 medals at the World Wrestling Championship. This is the most important thing here. Only Indian to have won 3 medals. So they may even ask this as a question. So he added an Olympic medal to his list after winning bronze medal at uh, the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. So just be aware of all these things. Okay. So 2020 Games was Punya's first Olympics and he was one of the India's brightest prospects for medals in Tokyo and he uh, lived up to it and won a medal even though it was um, bronze. He has performed well consistently for the past three years at major tournaments. He won the gold at 2018 Commonwealth, Asian Games, Silver and Bronze at 2018 and 19 editions of the World Championship. He was among the eight Indian wrestlers who represented, wrestlers who represented India at the 2020 Summer Olympics, of course. So, he has been a um, phenomenal uh, wrestler for India who has been contributing a lot with respect to wrestling in the past few years. Bajrang Punia, Haryana-based wrestler. Next, uh, again, uh, there is some news with respect to World Championship. He claimed bronze in Belgrade. Again, this is recent. Please do remember. What did Bajrang Punya do? Uh, he won four medals at the World Wrestling Championship and claimed bronze in uh, Belgrade. Ace grappler Bajrang Punya became the only Indian to claim four medals at the World Wrestling Championship by clinching a bronze in the current edition on Sunday. So, he claimed how many medals? Four medals. Where? World Wrestling Championship. Okay. Anyway, that's about uh, Bajrang Punia. Next. Who is the only Indian on the Times 100 emerging leaders list? That's the question. Very easy question actually. If you look at the options, it's easy. Otherwise, um, it's difficult to answer these type of questions. Only Indian on Times 100 emerging leaders. So, this is the key for us. Uh, that leader should be an emerging leader. So the options here are um, Anil Ambani, Gautam Adani, Mukesh Ambani and Akash Ambani. Obviously Anil Ambani won't qualify for this, uh, for reasons best known to us. Gautam Adani and Mukesh Ambani can also be eliminated for one simple reason. They are not emerging leaders. They have already made their name. So I don't think they can be strictly considered as emerging. So if at all there is anyone, that would be Akash Ambani, son of uh, Mukesh Ambani. So easy uh, question and um, easy to answer as well. I mean uh, easy to answer because of the options which have been given. Akash Ambani only Indian in Time Magazine's 100 emerging leaders list. Again all these things may not be um, like we may question the methodology as to how exactly they came up with the number but this is something which can be asked as a question. For us that is what matters. It doesn't matter to us whether the methodology which they 
uh, employed was correct or not. According to Times Magazine's 100 Emerging Leaders list, Anil Ambani is one among them. That's all. For us, that is what, sorry, Akash Ambani is one among them. That is what matters to us. Next. Akash Ambani, the eldest of two sons of Reliance Industries, Chairman Mukesh Ambani has found his name on the Time Magazine's top 100 global rising stars. Every year, Time Magazine publishes the Time 100 Next, 100 Next, that is the name of the list, a list inspired by its flagship 100, uh, Time 100. Okay, Akash Ambani is reportedly the only Indian on the list. Um, then, what else, what else, uh, this is important. Akash Ambani was promoted in June 2020, of course, uh, to the chairman of Jio, India's largest telecom company with over 426 million subscribers after being controversially handed a board seat at just 22. That means he became the board member at the age of 22. Now he has become uh, the chairman of the company that is uh, Jio. So that is the thing. Uh, and in fact, there is one more thing. For the record, Reliance Industries uh, chairman Mukesh Ambani has resigned from the board of Reliance Jio thereby handling over the reins to his elder son, Akash Ambani. That means, more or less, it has been uh, taken care by Akash Ambani now, now that Mukesh Ambani is no longer actively involved in Jio as the chairman or even the board member. Next. How many airbags in uh, passenger cars are to become compulsory from 1st October 2023? Again, there is one year time for the manufacturers to do this, this uh, mostly was the result of uh, Cyrus Mistry dying in a car crash. Cyrus Mistry was the uh, CEO of Tata, uh, sons uh, for some time. And uh, recently he died in a car crash. And the reason which they attributed was that there were no airbags in the rear seats. So most likely because of that reason he died. Because the... Uh, Front seats had airbags, but the rear seats did not have. So most likely because of that reason, then, and also because of safety, uh, the union government brought about this rule. Anyway, let's read the explanation. Six airbags rule for passengers cars deferred by a year to October 23, they say. This was reported uh, in Economic Times on 29th of September. Union Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari on Thursday announced that the deadline for mandatory implementation of six airbags in a passenger car has been pushed by a year. Because all of a sudden, if you tell the manufacturers that you need to have so many airbags, it may not be possible for them to do that. So therefore, um, this is what uh, was done. It was pushed by a year. The deadline has been extended due to global supply chain constraints being faced by the auto industry and its impact on the macroeconomic scenario, the minister said. Supply chain has been affected um, for various reasons, mostly because of uh, COVID and also because of Ukraine war. So even if you look at the chips uh, being manufactured, electronic chips, so even that, uh, there is a shortage of that too. Considering the global supply chain constraints being faced by auto industry and its impact, uh, blah, 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 it has been pushed by one year. That is what the minister tweeted. Of course, you may have noticed a few things uh, here are um, news items because of the tweets. Tweets is nothing but the posts which you put on Twitter, which was recently acquired by Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla. So that is one more news item which may also be asked as a question. Anyway, next. Which country has granted the citizenship to former US security contractor Edward Snowden? Again, Edward Snowden uh, is a very famous name. A um, few years ago, he blew the whistle on this uh, NSA program, wherein uh, it was revealed by him that uh, US security agency uh, they spied on their own citizens by installing some kind of uh, software uh, in the phones and uh, through various means of course but basically he blew the whistle and then they wanted to arrest him he went to different countries and finally he, he went to russia and he has been living there since uh, 10 years now i believe and uh, recently uh, citizenship was also granted to him he i think has a dual citizenship now of uh, that of uh, Russia as well as of uh, US. Anyway, let's read the explanation. Who is Edward Snowden? The American granted Russian citizenship by Putin. Okay, Putin is of course the premier of uh, Russia. 
Many people wondered about Snowden joining in the Ukraine war after the partial mobilization of troops was ordered by Putin last week, under which 300 lakh military reservists were called. This is not directly related to our topic, but still. Anyway, this is of course Snowden. You may have seen him. Edward Snowden, the US whistleblower, who revealed in 2013 that the American government's National Security Agency, that is NSA, was carrying out large-scale surveillance of its own citizens and abroad. Was granted Russian citizenship by Russian President, sorry, I said Premier, he is a President, Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday. While Snowden uh, had earlier expressed his wish to uh, hold dual citizenship in US and Russia, where he has been residing since 2013, Okay, okay, the further all those things not important. Basically, he has been there since then and now he has been granted the citizenship. Okay, so that's about Snowden. Let's move on. Again, this may also come as a question, very interesting development with respect to private rocket. Okay, let's see. Vikram S, India's first private rocket set to launch between November 12th and 16th. All these days, of course, you would have seen that only the government agencies led by ISRO, they would, they were launching rockets. But now, even the private players have entered uh, this field now, which is interesting and maybe it's a new industry. Uh, and maybe it will generate employment and uh, attract capital as well. Skyroot Aerospace is set to become the first private sector company in the country to launch a rocket into space. It will start a new era for the space sector which was opened in 2020 to facilitate private sector participation. Okay, fine. Skyroot, uh, okay, same thing. Mm, India's first private rocket, uh, this is important again, Vikram S is the name of that. Okay. India's first privately developed rocket is set to launch between so and so. Uh, the announcement was made by Hyderabad based space startup Skyroot Aerospace. So this is based out of Hyderabad. If at all that comes as a question, you never know. Uh, the maiden mission of Skyroot Aerospace named Prarambh, the beginning obviously, Sanskrit word, is set to carry three customer payloads and will launch from the Indian Space Research Organization's launch pad at Sri Harikota. So ISRO, ISRO launch pad, we would have seen many rockets being launched from Sri Harikota and this will also be launched from the same place. Okay. Now, uh, this is one snippet which is interesting. Why is it named Vikram? Obviously, many would have already guessed by now, but uh, let me just give the explanation. As a tribute to the founder of the Indian Space Program and renowned scientist Vikram Sarabhai. Why did they do this? They named their first uh, rocket as Vikram, as a tribute to Vikram Sarabhai. Okay, so... Again, again, something related to the company. It aims to restrict the entry barriers to cost-efficient satellite launch services and space flight by advancing its mission of making space lifts, space flights more affordable, reliable, and regular for all. Okay, they have uh, high lofty ambitions. We'll see how far they succeed. That's about the private uh, rocket Vikram. Next, this is interesting. World Coconut Day. When I first read this, I was wondering, do we even have a coconut day now? I mean, it's been there since a long time. Just that I did not know. There are so many such days which may or may not be popular. Few of the days are popular because of various reasons. And uh, one such day which is not popular, at least um, according to me, is the coconut day. Let's see. In 2009, the APCC decided to mark September 2nd as the World Coconut Day to promote awareness about the coconut fruit. Okay, fine. Uh, September 2nd is celebrated. Remember the date, September 2nd, by the way. is celebrated um, as World Coconut Day. The day came about following an initiative by Asian and Pacific Coconut Community. Asian and Pacific Coconut Community, APCC. Headquartered in Jakarta, Indonesia, the organization's members account for over 90% of the total coconut production in the world. All those members, uh, member countries basically, uh, South Asian countries. So they produce about 90% of the world's coconuts. Some of the members of the APCC include India, obviously India has to be there. Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, Kenya, etc. These are the countries which are part of APCC and September 2nd is celebrated as World Coconut Day. There is one more interesting thing with respect to coconuts. I was wondering how, what is the production uh, breakup with respect to our country. So this is how 
uh, it stands right now total production in uh, metric ton in 2021 we produced this much 14300 and in 21 22 we produced 13273 metric ton not very important but what is important is the coconut production mostly happens in south india so of course there are few other states few states in northeast and maybe west bengal bihar etc they also produce uh, coconut but it is mostly the south indian states uh, which uh, produce coconut and karnataka is uh, leading the pack with 4000 odd metric tons then comes uh, tamil nadu with 3500 kerala with 3300 so kerala for the amount of uh, land which they have it's an imp uh, achievement because they have very little land compared to tamil nadu and karnataka but still they produce 3300 metric ton andhra produces about 1130 and this is the uh, rest of the country so that is how the coconut production uh, is split in india if at all they ask a question it might be which state in india produces the highest number of coconuts the answer is karnataka next okay this was about uh, innovation index i think i forgot to add the question but anyway let's read this global innovation index india breaks into top 40 for the first time uh, if at all they ask a question it might be like you know, india is placed um, what or which number with respect to in innovation okay so this is by world intellectual property organization um, okay let's read the news material showing a substantial improvement in the global innovation index ranking india has been placed in the top 40 countries for the first time in the annual report for 22 released by the switzerland based world intellectual property organization it's a mouthful wipo on thursday uh, it in its report a copy of which is with the tribune it said india is the innovation leader in the world in the lower middle income group mm -hmm okay ours is in the low lower middle income group obviously uh, our, our per, capita, per capita income is not that high uh, compared to other countries based on that they think uh, whatever we have achieved is significant it continues to lead the world in ict services exports and holds top rankings in other indicators including venture capital receipt value finance for startups and scale-ups graduates in science and engineering labor productivity growth and domestic industry diversification there are obviously various parameters based on those parameters they think we are doing okay not bad okay switzerland the united states sweden the united kingdom and netherlands are the world's most innovative economies according to the report okay fine mm. india entered uh, top 40 for the first time uh, even turkey okay anyway uh, that was reported in uh, tribune on september 22nd let's move on who has won the silver in the women's judo 48 kg final at commonwealth games 22 again these type of questions will be common because it's all sports related and happened recently so you may get these type of questions so the options being mirabai chanu um, bindyarani devi Shushila Devi Likmabam, Harjinder Kaur. So these are the four options and um, this is the answer. Sushila Devi clinches silver in judo 48 kg final. Wins seventh medal for India at the Commonwealth Games 2022. Okay, let's read. Sushila Devi Likmabam got a silver in women's judo 48 kg final. Giving India its seventh medal of the Common Games, uh, Commonwealth Games 2022. Okay, so that's the thing. Mm, let's move on. Huh, with respect to Mirabai Chan also, you have to uh, remember. Okay, uh, Veda has joined us in the chat. Okay, Mirabai Chan wins India's first gold medal at Commonwealth Games. Again, uh, the reason why they had given Mirabai Chan as one of the options is because this is a very familiar name. That's why I wanted to talk about Mirabai Chan as well because she won the gold medal. No? So just remember that. Olympic medalist and ace weightlifter Mirabai Chanu wins India's first gold medal at the Commonwealth Games 22 in women's 49 kg weightlifting category. Okay, fine. Mm, that's about Mirabai Chanu. So, Sushila Devi won the silver in 48 kg and uh, Mirabai Chanu won the gold in uh, which kg was that? 49 kg. Okay. 
different category weight categories will be there obviously so they both won the medals but different medals so next in west bengal the state government is creating seven new districts what will be the total number of districts in the states now any idea anyone from west bengal here in the chat so they have created seven new districts uh, the reason why they did so was uh, they have less land compared to other smaller northeastern states but they have sorry they have more land compared to uh, smaller northeastern states but they have less number of districts larger area but lesser number of districts it was becoming difficult for the state administrative wise to take care of large districts so they thought it fit to split up the districts and um, so few the big districts were split up and they created seven new districts this is a common thing uh, in various states some time ago even in karnataka this happened not some time ago few years ago uh, even in karnataka something similar was done now let's uh, read the news item west bengal to have seven new districts in six months for better administration they say let's read what exactly they have got to say Bengal will have seven new districts in six months, taking total count to thirty from twenty-three. Right now they have twenty-three. Once they carve seven more districts, it will go to thirty. The aim behind more but smaller districts, said sources, was enhanced administration and administration and management. Usually, this is what happens. Again, they have mentioned also that Bengal is the country's fourth most populous state. Population-wise, it is the fourth. It stands in fourth position. But its twenty-three its districts are fewer than that of its less populated neighbors, Assam. Assam has lesser population but more number of districts. So does Odisha and Jharkhand. So maybe they thought, why can't we also do the same thing and did that? Okay. Uh, again, there are few details. We are not worried about that. Okay. Ah, uh, again, this is interesting. North twenty-four um, Paraganas will cease to be Bengal's largest and most populous district after two new ones, Ichamati and Basir Hat, are carved out. Twenty-four Paraganas was uh, a, one of the popular places. Uh, now it has been split into two. Okay, fine. Next. Okay, before I forget, uh, if you haven't already checked this, please do check. The institute um, had released the updated uh, reference material some time ago. So there are two divisions here. Uh, I think current affairs is here. Yeah, even though this is slightly older, March fifteen twenty two, it may still be useful because um, uh, Darshiga already mentioned that they had asked a few um, old questions as well. So just be careful about that. Okay, so read this once. Uh, excuse me, it won't harm you by any I mean any stretch. So just go through this. Don't read everything now. Just try to um, assimilate facts. So there are explanations as well here. Don't read the explanation. Just make sure that you underline the facts if you have the printed material. So. Then that way, a day before the exam, you can just skim through this and maybe try to revise. Anyway, let's come back here. Just give me a minute until I drink water. Okay, where were we? <coughs> Ah, which airline is bringing out a new policy allowing pilots to fly after retirement? Okay, fine. Uh, the options being Air India, Indigo, Vistara, and uh, SpiceJet. Okay, fine. So let's see. Air India brings new policy allows pilots to fly for five years after retirement. Okay, I think the present age is fifty-eight or sixty. I don't remember. Fifty-eight. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh. Air India has introduced a new policy which will <laughs> g 
give an extension of service uh, to its selected pilots on a contract basis for a period of five years after retirement. Okay, what is interesting here is it's not as if they will be employed. It's purely on a contract basis. The contract can be extended till the age of 65. 58 plus 5 would be 63. If they want, they can extend it up to two more years. That is until they attain the age of 65. So this is actually good because uh, on one hand, you may say that uh, youngsters will not be given employment. But if you look at European countries, some of them, they work until the age of 60, 65. Sorry, 65, 70. So that way, it's okay. Again, individuals will always have a choice. If they want to retire, they will retire. If they want to continue, they will continue. Okay. Now, moving on. Which state has won the Kelo India Youth Games 2021 title with 52 gold medals on the final day? So, on the final day, they got 52 medals and because of that, they won the Youth Games. Again, uh, this is very easy. Haryana is ultimate Kelo India champion. Haryana tops the medal tally with 52 gold, 39 silver and 46 bronze medals ahead of Maharashtra who finished second with 45 gold, 40 silver and 40 bronze with the day starting with Maharashtra leading the medal tally, Haryana boxers came with a came up with a dominating display to win 10 gold medals out of the 20 medals on offer in boxing to help hosts Haryana win the overall championship trophy on the concluding day of the Kelo India Youth Games at Tau Devi Lal Sports Complex. Interesting because uh, Maharashtra was leading until then, and all of a sudden uh, in the final day, Haryana won 10 gold medals out of possible 20 and won the championship, overall championship, obviously. So, that is the thing. Haryana is the winner. Next. This is very easy, I believe, because it was in news uh, recently. Who has been made the national icon of Election Commission of India? We have uh, four different options. Neeraj Chopra, the Olympian uh, gold medalist. Then, uh, Pankaj Tripathi, the famous... Uh, Hindi cinema actor from Bihar, Amitabh Bachchan, the superstar, and P.V. Sindhu, again, Olympian uh, silver medalist in badminton. So, out of these, who was, who has been made the National Icon of Election Commission of India? So, it is in fact Pankaj Tripathi. So, has been made the National Icon by Election Commission of India, and uh, that's the thing. So, usually these type of things are done so that... Uh, People come and vote, cast their vote so that they at least follow their, uh, what can we say, uh, superstars or actors. Usually it's the actors and sports people who pitch in as uh, ambassadors of these kind of things. Usually they don't take any money for these type of things. So I think in this case also the same can be said. Actor Pankaj Tripathi was made the National Icon of Election Commission of India in an event on Monday afternoon. The actor was chosen for the honour for his association with ECA in creating awareness amongst voters. Okay. Fine. Next. Who among the following has been appointed as the 50th Chief Justice of India, effective from 9th November 22. This may come as a question. Uh, this was in news recently. So now, in this case, we have uh, four different options. Vineet Soren, Shripatri Ravindra Bhatt, Dhananjay Chandrachud and Uday Umesh Lalit. Which of these names have you heard recently? Um, so... They will become the Chief Justice, effective from 9th November, that is today. So now, let's look at the answer. Justice D.Y. Chandrachud appointed the 50th Chief Justice of India. Justice D.Y. Chandrachud will take oath as the 50th Chief Justice of India on 9th November 2022. Okay, let's see. He is uh, Mr. or rather Justice D.Y. Chandrachud. President Draupadi Murmu appointed Justice D.Y. Chandrachud as the 50th uh, CGI. Uh, Law Minister Kiran Riju said on October 17th. Justice Chandrachud will take oath on November 9th, a day after incumbent CGI Justice Uday Umesh Lalit demits office on attaining the age of 65. Again, so it one news item tells us so many different things. One is uh, Law Minister is Kiran Riju, President is uh, Draupadi Murmu and the Chandrachud is the new CGI and Lalit uh, was the 
existing CGI who is demitting. Demitting means retiring office, leaving office after attaining the age of 65. Anyone who attains the age of 65 after being elevated as a Supreme Court Justice will have to retire. Okay. So, just remember the name D.Y. Chandrachud. And also there was one more name there that is Ravindra Bhatt. Ravindra Bhatt uh, has been appointed as Supreme Court judge but is not the Chief Justice. Ravindra Bhatt is actually a native of uh, Manjeshwar Taluk which comes in Kasargod district of Kerala but though you can say it is um, closer to Karnataka. Anyway, so he is from that district. He was uh, Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court. Ravindra Bhatt. So remember these names. Okay, next. There was one more name there uh, among the options which also may come as a question which uh, is of that of Vineet Saran. Vineet Saran, uh, a former Supreme Court judge, has now been appointed as the BCCI Ethics Officer. BCCI is of course the Board of Cricket Control uh, in India. So he has been appointed as the Ethics Officer of BCCI. So who is that? Saran, Vineet Saran. So even he had attained the age of 65 and he retired from Supreme Court and now he is serving as the uh, ethics officer and ombudsman uh, with respect to BCCI. So that is Vineet Saran, BCCI. Just remember those two. Next. Who has been appointed as the presiding officer of the UAPA tribunal by the government of India? This tribunal is not something which will always be there. Uh, in some cases, they set up this tribunal and someone will be made the presiding officer. And uh, they will, usually they will be retired Supreme Court justices. So we have different options. Now let us look at the news item. Now this is with respect to People Front of India, a banned organization. So Justice Dinesh appointed presiding officer of UAPA tribunal. Okay, The center has appointed, center in the sense, union government, has appointed Justice Dinesh Kumar Sharma of the Delhi High Court as the presiding officer of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Tribunal, UAPA, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. In the matter recently of banned uh, Popular Front of India and its affiliates. Did I say People's Front? Popular Front. Once an organization is banned under UAPA, a tribunal is set up by the government. Uh, to adjudicate whether or not there is sufficient cause or ground for declaring its unlawful association. Basically, they are giving them an opportunity. So, P P PFA or Popular Front of India. So, they will put up their defense with respect to this tribunal. If the tribunal is convinced, the ban will be struck down. Or if they think it's not convincing, the ban will be upheld. So, that is the job of this tribunal headed by Justice Dinesh Kumar Sharma. Next. Again, this is something which uh, is easy to answer. This was in news recently. Mulayam Singh Yadav of uh, Samajwadi Party uh, recently passed away. He had served as the Chief Minister of which state? Again, easy to answer. Definitely not Uttarakhand. MP Bihar. He is from Uttar Pradesh. And... Uh, his son was also the chief minister of uh, UP. Um, so, that is the thing. Anyway, now, let's see. Mulayam Singh Yadav, the pragmatic journey of one of India's most enduring mass leaders. Again, this is uh, an obituary of uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav uh, from uh, the portal News Laundry. He was a wrestler, a former wrestler who drew on strength and girl in his short, stocky frame. So, that is about Mulayam Singh. Uh, Akhilesh Yadav was his son who was the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh. and uh, In fact, uh, Akhilesh Yadav, uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav's son, uh, studied in Mysore, did his engineering in Mysore. And Mysore is the place where Excel Academy is based out of, if you did not know. Anyway, moving on. This again was in news recently. Uh, there were a lot of... Uh, discussions going on about India's rank in the global hunger index. What is India's rank in the global hunger index 2022? Let's see. India ranks 107 on 2022 global hunger index behind Pakistan, Bangladesh and Nepal. 
so we are behind all these three countries uh, uh, we do not know what is the uh, yardstick for measuring the hunger index so according to some yardstick we are behind pakistan bangladesh and nepal which is unfortunate but hopefully we will improve in future in asia afghanistan with rank of uh, 109 is the only country behind india neighboring countries uh, pakistan bangladesh nepal and sri lanka even sri lanka has fared much better even though there is lot of turmoil there Uh, have all fared better than india apparently okay uh, okay now what is this global hunger hunger index so accordingly uh, sorry according to this report it is a tool for comprehensively measuring and tracking hunger at global regional and national levels so they try to track hunger so according to that uh, our score is 29.1 and the level of hunger in india has been labeled serious so many people are suffering because of that apparently according to this report so hopefully next year we won't be here at least would have uh, beat in the asian countries let's hope we'll beat them next we'll improve our ranking more than anything else we should make sure that people don't suffer because of hunger so there is up to the government let's hope they do next dr n kalai selvi has become the first women director general of which indian research organization okay uh, let's read the explanation n kalai selvi i hope i am pronouncing the name right first woman chief of csir okay so csir is a research organization where she has become the first woman chief so let's read this hindu report she started her career in research as an entry level scientist uh, at the same institute and now he has been appointed as its head currently the director of csir electro central electrochemical research institute karaikudi tamil nadu will now lead the network of 38 laboratories and nearly 4500 scientists and has been appointed for 2 years according to a note from the appointments committee of the union cabinet so now she will be um, working as the director general the first woman director general of this organization for the next 2 years so that is the thing next moving on in space technology iso partnered with which country space agency during the bengaluru space expo i don't know if it is iso or isro maybe uh, there is a missing letter here let's see so which country space agency oh, let's read isro uh, that's what i thought it's not iso it is isro isro australian space agency to boost bilateral collaborations in the space tech okay fine we collaborated with which country we collaborated with australia if you have various option just make sure that you use tick all australia indian space research organization isro for short and australian space agency asa an entity that is responsible for the development of the country's commercial space sector have decided to intensify their interactions with a view to developing and growing space technology markets for both india and australia fine let's move on for us what matters is it is australian space agency asc which has collaborated with isro next what does this say where was the international dairy federation world dairy summit 2022 held what kind of summits do they even conduct dairy summit okay next let's read where exactly it was held pm modi to inaugurate international dairy federation world dairy summit 2022 today what a mouthful such a huge name prime minister modi will inaugurate international dairy federation world dairy summit uh, being organized at india expo center Uh, and mart greater noida noida is the place where it was held when was it held it was held on 12th uh, september 22 i mean year 22 it was four days long held from 12th to 15th okay what did they do so is a congregation of global and indian dairy stakeholders including industry leaders experts farmers policy planners catering around the theme of dairy for nutrition and livelihood that was the theme and uh, there were 1500 participants from 50 countries okay fine 
Okay, the last such summit was held in India about half a century ago in 1974. I think there will be some rotation uh, with respect to who will hold this. So, India conducted this program um, way back in 1974. After that, we are conducting now after more than 50 years. Okay, next. Who is the chief executive officer of Niti Aayog? Again, uh, this uh, is a possible question because... Um, uh, Amitabh Kant, who was the CEO, uh, recently demitted office and in his place someone else was appointed. For that reason, this might come as a question. So, just remember who has been appointed. So, the answer here is Parameshwaran Ayer uh, to take over as Niti Aayog CEO as Amitabh Kant leaves. Okay. Indian Express report. This is uh, Mr. Parameshwar. Parameshwaran Ayer. Okay. Let's see. Ayer will be replacing Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Kant. Fine. Uh, Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Kant is set to leave the government think tank at the end of June after a six year long stint. So Amitabh Kant was the CEO for six years. Now he is retiring and in his place, he has retired. In, fact. in his place, Mr. Parameshwaran Ayer will be appointed. So this uh, man, Parameshwaran Ayer, he was the secretary of the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation. He was the force behind the Swachh Bharat uh, mission. So, he has some experience in uh, uh, dealing in these type of things. Maybe because of that reason, he has been appointed as the CEO of Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is the Aayog which we have instead of the Planning Commission. We used to have this Planning Commission earlier. Now, that has been uh, what withdrawn and Niti Aayog is what we have right now. Okay, next. Who has been elected as the 14th Vice President of India? Again, this is something which might be asked because of the... Uh, uh, I mean, it happened recently, you know. So, you may get a question. Just remember the name, that's all. Sri Jagdeep Dhankar. Again, uh, difficult to remember. But you will have to just associate this with something else and maybe you will be able to remember. Okay. Uh, sworn in as the 14th Vice President uh, of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha. So, you, uh, I hope you know that whoever uh, is the Vice President, they also automatically become the Chairman of uh, Rajya Sabha. So, uh, that's the thing earlier we had Venkaya Naidu as the Vice President and Chairman. Now, we have uh, Jagdeep Dhankar. I think he's from Rajasthan. Jagdeep Dhankar today. Today, in the sense, 11th August, uh, took over as the 14th Vice President of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha, a renowned lawyer and former West Bengal Governor, was administered the oath of office by President uh, Srimati Draupadi Murmu. Okay, fine. So, this is uh, Mr. Dhankar, who is now the Vice President. Next. Which regulatory body has notified a framework introducing a social stock exchange? Hmm. We don't have stock exchange just for equities. We don't have stock exchange just for commodities. We have a social stock exchange as well. I mean, of course, we don't have it, but a framework has been uh, notified. So, let's see. SEBI. It is uh, SEBI which has notified a framework for social stock exchange. Capital Markets Regulator Securities and Exchange Board of India on Monday came out with a detailed framework for social stock exchange specifying minimum requirements for a not-for-profit organization for registering with boards and disclosure requirements. You can dis register yourself as a not-for-profit organization. Maybe people will invest, invest in the sense they will donate funds to you for um, the cause which you espouse. This came after SEBI in July notified rules for social stock exchange to provide social enterprises with an additional avenue to raise funds. How do they raise funds? So they can raise funds by registering themselves with this and if other people are interested in what you do, maybe they will contribute to you. Of course, there will be disclosure requirements since you are accepting public money. So those things will follow obviously. Uh, we should see how exactly this will um, actually uh, get implemented. Interesting thing. Let's see. Bade chalo. Campaign under Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav has been launched by which union ministry? One gripe which I have with uh, all these, um, the, what is that? Things is, it's always in Hindi. Bade chalo. Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. 
so it's difficult for us south indians to pronounce this anyway and understand also so let's see bade chalo movement under azadi ka amrit mahotsav begins so it is under uh, which ministry it is under the ministry of culture by the way let's see with the objective of connecting with the youth of the nation and to instill a deeper sense of patriotism among them the ministry of culture has decided to create a youth centric activation for greater outreach of amrit mahotsav named bade chalo it is designed to involve the youth of the country encouraging them to come forward and imbibe the true spirit of our democracy and celebrate 75 years of india's independence with youthful fervor okay basically to instill uh, patriotism if you were not patriotic enough by promoting this program the government will make sure that you become the patriot which you weren't earlier through this mass movement or jan uh, okay there is something else as well uh, and you would have heard of hargar tiranga as well they wanted to make sure that everyone hosts the tricolor during the uh, independence uh, for at least 3 days and uh, it was a successful thing i hope i believe anyway next which country will host unsc meet on counter terrorism in october 2022 counter terrorism meet we definitely can guess which country will not host our famous uh, or rather infamous neighbor so let's see in a first unsc sent counter terrorism committee to meet in india this week okay we are hosting it by the way okay this will be the first such meeting of unsc ctc in india since its establishment in 2001 the permanent representatives of india uh to the un serves as the chair of ctc for 2002 again all those things not important india is hosting basically that is what is important for us okay 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 blah 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 next prime minister narendra modi inaugurated deogar airport in which state again uh, this may come as a question all these questions by the way which we are discussing since past few minutes at least since half an hour they are all from cset bulletin Uh, if you did not know institute uh, comes out with the cset e bulletin and uh, we have questions related to all the topics in cset uh, including of course current affairs so these questions are taken from there some of these uh, of course it's a mix i also um, adapted questions from elsewhere as well whatever i found interesting i have included here obviously uh, as i said earlier in the beginning of the session current affairs has no limits so whatever they want to ask they can ask so that is one problem with this anyway so which uh, state is this uh, let's see pm pm inaugurates jharkhand second airport in deogar jharkhand second airport okay that's interesting they only had one airport till now okay fine pm pm uh, narendra modi on tuesday inaugurated the much awaited um, deogar airport in jharkhand in the presence of chief minister hemant soren who also accorded him a warm welcome in the state union aviation minister jyoti raditya sindhya was also present at the event the dream of this airport which was envisioned in 2010 has been fulfilled by pm modi it's a matter of pride for us the chief minister said the deogar airport is the second airport in jharkhand okay two more airports um, will be constructed apparently let's see anyway deogar airport jharkhand just remember that much and also this fellow's name hemant soren he is the chief minister of uh, jharkhand next the european union has given final approval to which country to join euro currency in 2023 some country will join the euro currency definitely not uk but which country it is let's see croatia gets final okay to adopt euro in 2023 let's see you you EU European Union finance ministers have decided to admit Croatia to the monetary union the former Yugoslav republic is set to start using the euro in january interesting croatia okay finally croatia is also into euro currency now next moving on which nations former prime minister tragically died after being shot at a campaign event on july 8 uh, this was in news i'm sure you would know uh, this was uh, uh, Shinbe, I mean Japan's prime minister, basically Shinbe, Shino Ab. I, I forgot his name. Shizno Ab. So he died during that um, campaign. Someone shot him, and uh, he immediately died. I believe oh, he was taken to hospital, and then he died. Anyway, so that was Shinzo Ab or Ab Shinzo of Japan. 
India's first autonomous navigation facility, Tihan, has been inaugurated in which institute? Tihan, Automate, Autonomous Navigation Facility. Okay, let's see. India's first autonomous navigation facility, Tihan, launched at IIT Hyderabad. Uh -huh, interesting. India's first autonomous navigation facility, Tihan, was inaugurated by Jitendra Shah. Again, one new site article gives you so much of information. Jitendra Singh is the Union Minister of State for Science and Technology. And this Tihan means Technology Innovation Hub on Autonomous Navigation. So it was launched in IIT. Uh, Hyderabad. Hyderabad even had an IIT. Okay. Uh, fine. Let's move on. India lifted how many million people out of the poverty in the last 15 years? Interesting. India lifted how many million people from poverty in the last 15 years? Let's see. Number of poor people in India fell by about 415 million between 2005 6 and 19 to 21. Basically, in the last 15 years, at least about 415 million rose above the state of poverty. That means they were poor earlier. Now, because of various uh, things which we did as a country, they are no longer poor, which is good news actually. Hopefully, this number will rise. Okay. The number of poor people in India fell by about 415 million uh, between those uh, 15 years. That is interesting. Anyway. Sneh, Snehan, actually it is. Snehan Karuna Tilaka won Booker Prize 2022. He is from which country? If you are a cricket fan, you can easily guess he is from which country. Snehan Karuna Tilaka. Okay, let's see. Sneh Shehan, Shehan, sorry, it's not she Snehan, it's actually Shehan. Okay, Shehan Karnatilaka wins Booker Prize for the Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. Okay, judges describe the Sri Lankan's author's second novel as a roller coaster journey through the life and death and praised its audacity and ambition. He's from Sri Lanka, basically, that's what is important for us. He won the Booker Prize recently for the year 2022 for his book, The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. Okay, fine. Next. Which country inaugurated the world's first hydrogen-powered train fleet? Okay, supposed to be good uh, environment-wise, pollution-wise. So, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Germany unveils the world's first hydrogen train fleet. Hydrogen trains have become a promising way to decarbonize the rail sector and replace climate warming diesel, which still powers 20% of the journeys in Germany. Apparently, Germany still has diesel uh, engine uh, trains. Now, they want to get rid of those. Instead of that, they have this hydrogen train, uh, which they have introduced, to reduce the carbon footprint. Good that they have uh, adopted this, hopefully. This will be adopted by many other countries which still have diesel engines. Who won the UNESCO Peace Prize Award in 2022? Let's see. Angela Merkel wins UNESCO Peace Prize for efforts to welcome refugees. She was the former Chancellor of uh, Germany. So let's see what exactly the news item has got to say. Former Chancellor of Germany Angela Merkel has been awarded the 2022 UNESCO Peace Prize for her efforts to welcome refugees. All the members of the jury were touched by her courageous decision in 2015 to welcome more than 1.2 million refugees, notably from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Eritrea. This is the legacy she leaves. So for that reason, they have given her the UNESCO Peace Prize. Okay, since we are talking about Peace Prize, how can we leave Nobel Peace Prize uh, far behind? So, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for 2022? Let's see that too. Uh, Ales Bialyatsky, Russian name, difficult to pronounce for us. The 2022 Nobel Peace Prize has been jointly awarded to Belarus, Belarusian human rights advocate Ales uh, Bialyatsky, the Russian human rights organizational memorial and the Ukraine Human Rights Organization Center for Civil Liberties. Okay, basically they wanted to uh, rebuke Russia for what they did to Ukraine. So they awarded the peace prize to this guy who uh, is a human rights activist. Okay. Anyway, just remember the name. Ales Bailiatsky. Okay. Let's look at one more question. Which company has announced a campaign to upskill cyber security researchers and developers in India? Okay, upskill cyber security researchers and developers in India. So, Google it is. Google announces cyber security upskilling program for 1 lakh developers in India. Okay. Search and internet major Google has introduced a campaign 
to upskill cyber security researchers and developers in India, the campaign will be part of company Cyber Security Roadshow, which will cover multiple cities across India and offer tools, tutorials, and mentorship on security practices for building consumer apps as well as enterprise programs. Cyber security is something which is an important thing now because it's easy to scam people, especially the ones who are not computer literate, computer literates. So I'm sure you'd have seen many such cases in recent times. So maybe to avoid such things, uh, Google has introduced something of this sort. Good that they are doing something like this. Next. When is the National Sports Day celebrated? This is interesting. National Sports Day in India is celebrated on August 29th, the birth anniversary of hockey legend Major Dhyan Chand. So on his birthday, we celebrate National Sports Day, which is on August 29th. This, uh, the day was uh, designated as India's National Sports Day way back in uh, 2012 itself, 10 years ago. Anyway, that is the thing. Mm. Fine, uh, that's all for uh, today. Uh, I would suggest please uh, go through our uh, YouTube channel and uh, play the playlist Current Affairs or CSET. You can uh, check the past videos of CSET which we have uploaded and as far as possible try to uh, read uh, cover a lot of topics don't just restrict to topics which are there in the study material uh, current affairs as i said is as i said is limitless anyway thanks for uh, joining us for the live session i hope this session was useful i hope at least few of the questions which we discussed today will appear in the exam so yeah that's about it Thank you guys. If at all you have anything to say or ask, please leave a comment below once the live session ends. I will try to get back to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All the best, by the way, for the exams.